I want to share briefly on the need for revival. Why do we have to bother ourselves going to the stadium and all that we were doing last Friday? The need for a revival. Acts 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power. Say with me, you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, it says, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus. May this word bring healing our way, deliverance, freedom, transformation, salvation, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The need for a revival, or simply why revival? What is revival? Number one, revival means a divine visitation. Revival is what? A divine what? Visitation. To a people. When God visits a people, that is a revival. A revival is a divine visitation of God to a people that brings them from a state of apathy as per spiritual to a renewed and more active and a, you know, active attention to righteousness. From, from a state of lukewarmness to active what? Attention to righteousness. Revival number two is a powerful and widespread outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the people. When the Holy Spirit comes upon the people, that is the beginning of revival. Revival number three is God's visitation that brings changes in the spiritual and moral climate of a people. Revival is when God you know, visits a people and that comes with a change in the spiritual life and in the moral life of a people. Revival number four is about you as an individual coming back, you know, coming back to God as by having an active spiritual life and receiving more strength for the master's service. And I'm praying and my belief is that we've all been revived. And we will never be the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Now for the body of Christ, for you and I, the church of God, anytime there is a revival, or for us to have a revival, it must start from you, the individual. For a city to have a revival, it must start from an individual. For a family to have a revival, it must start from an individual. Thank God for what we did on Friday, how God helped us. But revival normally starts from an individual. That has purpose in the mind that no, I can't remain lukewarm any longer. Amen. Revival starts from an individual. Psalm 85, verse 5 to 7 says, Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again? that your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. An individual crying to God, tired of all about the spiritual apathy in, in, the, in the city, in the nation. An individual looking up to God for a change. It starts with an individual. Number two, revival begins with a cry for mercy. Seeing that Things are not right. That there is all about the city, nakedness in the city. All about 
seeing a place filled with poverty or unrighteousness. Revival begins with someone crying for mercy. Habakkuk 3, verse 1 to 2 says, Habakkuk 3, 1 to 2, a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, on Shigonoth. O oh Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In Lord, remember mercy. Someone crying for mercy. So revival begins with a sincere prayer for mercy. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal. That word heal there means bless their land. Someone sincerely, a people crying for mercy. Number three, revival involves fervent and consistent prayers. Not one of. Yes, we prayed for 10, we fasted for 10 plus 2, 12 days. We came here on Thursday night, we prayed for 6 hours. For some of us, we were here till the next day, till the time of the crusade. Or revival, as we call it now. Hallelujah. It comes with sincere, consistent, persistent prayers. Revival will not just happen. But involves consistent prayers. First Corinthians 16, 9 says, For a great and effective, effectual door has opened to us. Paul saying, but there are many adversaries. A great door to take over the city. There are many adversaries. So we have to be consistent in prayers. First Thessalonians 5.17 says, praying without ceasing. Oh yes, we prayed for three times a day, for 12 days. It shouldn't end there. We should pray more. Amen? We should pray more. I don't know about you, but I love the color. You know, what we saw at the stadium. The mixture. That should be the church. And it is possible. It is possible. If you are able to pay the price consistently. That is just it. If we can all, you say, Pastor, ow, oh, my job. That is where the problem is. My job, I need to go and work, make money. Hallelujah. That's why you should be a billionaire very soon. Amen. That's why you need to be a billionaire. A trillionaire. If all that is settled and we give ourselves to it, no, we can continue for one month every night. Before you know it, we are in the 25 sister main bowl. Hallelujah. That is how it happens. Just one, even one day, people are tired. Even one day, three hours, some of us are tired. Throughout Sunday, sleeping. Throughout uh, Saturday, sleeping. By Sunday, Pastor, I'm tired. No. If you really want a revival, it must be consistent. And we'll get there. The Lord will settle you. I said, the Lord will settle you. So that you will not be distracted with all the craziness about shifts. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You shall have more than enough. James 5, 16 says, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. As we pray effectively, fervently, we will see the results. The city will gather. Hallelujah. Someone said, one of our great men said, Say, Lord, let me burn for you. Let me 
born for you and the city will come and look at me burning. He said, I will kill myself. I will bury myself in the place of prayer and be burning. And when I'm born, everybody wants to come and see the fire. If you walk around Bravo and see someone that's on fire, real fire, people will gather. You can continue burning for God and people will come and look at you and see fire. We will be burning for Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Luke 18, 1 says, Men always ought to pray and not faint. Always, not one day off. Always. Anytime I get to that high peak of my spiritual life, sometimes I argue, I just get tired of coming back to this world. <laughs> you are a father. You are a husband. You have to provide for family. That's why Paul said, I don't want to marry. <laughs> Amen. Paul said, for me to do this work, forget about wife, forget about children. Let me, just, let me just be alone with God. He said, in fasting, I fasted more than anyone else. In praying the Holy Ghost, I prayed more than anybody else. Just because he was alone. But thank God, you and you, even when, whether you are married, you are a father, mother, wife, you will still be alone with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It involves consistent prayers. Men always ought to pray. Men always ought to pray and not faint. Jeremiah 33 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call on God. It is possible for England, for Bradford to be reclaimed. Do you agree? If you don't agree, at least what you saw on Friday can give you an indication that it is possible to take back this land. If you and I can pay the price, if you bring what you have, another person bring what they have, we gather together, we can do that three times in the year. We can do what we did four times in the year. We can take our divine encounter consistently to this no, to a neutral venue, a stadium venue. Hallelujah. John 14 verse 14 says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Anything, anything, and it involves revival. Anything, God will do it. Do you want to see your schools, your university, the colleges, the schools, all gathering together, praying the Holy Ghost, the VC, the Vashans, the professors, all of them. Hallelujah. All of them. Yes, you are there. Amen. Leading them in the Holy Ghost. And everybody excited. Before they go and be lecturing the students. Amen. It is possible. And we'll get there again. We shall get there again in this nation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 2 verse 8 says, Ask of me, Psalm 2 verse 8, Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Hallelujah. Ask God, he will give you the nations. He will give you the people. Now, revival, also number four, involves the Holy Spirit, and this is crucial. It involves the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the epicenter of any revival. You need the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, verse 1 to 4. When the day of, when the day really came, Pentecost came, they were in one accord. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they, they appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. One sat upon each of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Began to speak with other tongues. And after this, 
everything changed. The world turned upside down by a reason of an encounter, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We as a people will never be the same again. In your schools, you will cause a revival. In your workplaces, you will begin a revival. In the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but when I came to Bradford, then I wasn't all that too diplomatic. So every day, I would send an email. Then it was email, no Facebook, whatever, an email. I would, I would foolishly be sending an email to all in the university, in my, in my friendship group. We have the university, there's an email system whereby everybody in your group, all the PhD students, all the, all the students in your department will receive. And I will share my devotion there, foolishly. <laughs> Amen. Do you know what I mean? The general email that you email, and everybody, everybody, will, everybody, everybody will have it. And that's where I will share my, my devotion. And they were looking at me, so this, who is this person that's doing this thing? But the fact was that I made myself clear that this is, this is me. My spirit also come to, to the extent that it's just in the act, well, we know that you are for God, you are for God. But this is PhD first. <laughs> Amen. Let's get this thing done before you go, you do what, before you do what you want to do with your PhD. But the fact is that that saved me as a person. That saved me. Everybody knew that this one is for God. So that even to the point when I am weak, those I have ministered to will now minister back to me. Because instead of someone monopolizing that I am weak, for instance, if I'm if I'm I'm weak in the sense that if I'm occupied with my with my deadlines and I'm not praying as much as I'm supposed to pray and you have people coming all over you for whatever reason and they can monopolize on that your prayers are put an edge your prayers and your evangelism has put an edge this one is for God so dare not go too beyond have a limit if you don't evangelize to them they will see you as any other person that's the point I'm making so anytime they have an advent to come to you, you are, you'll be a prey. In your workplace, do they know you that you are for Christ? They should see the mark of Jesus in you. So even if you are just having a party with them, as you will do, workplace party, you are going for dinner, maybe 9, 10 p.m., you are in one kind of friendship dinner, or departmental dinner, or whatever be the you'll be marked. This one is for Christ. If not, you, you can be dealt with like any other person. Either way, either way, the Lord will help us and give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Quickly, this as a roundup, what does revival bring to a people? Number one, it brings freedom and liberty. It brings what? Psalm, 50, Psalm 85 verse 6 Will you not revive us again That Your people may rejoice It brings Number two Joy That's for joy For liberty John 8 verse 36 If the son makes you free You shall be free indeed Number one liberty John 8 36 2 Corinthians three seventeen. The Lord is the spirit And the where God's spirit is, there is liberty. Number two, it brings joy. Psalm 85 verse 6. Also, Acts 5 verse, Acts 8 verse 5 to 8. Philip went to a city, Samaria. After he has revived the city, the Bible says there was great joy in that city. Acts 8 verse 8. Go to 8 straight. Hallelujah. There was great joy 
in that city. After Philip was done with reviving the city. Acts 8 verse 8. The revival number one brings liberty. Number two brings joy. Now to the extent that in that encounter, somebody came and asked Philip, how much is the cost of the power of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> how much will I? How much is the cost that I can buy some too? A sorcerer. Now look at what John Wesley said. John Wesley said, money never stays with me. I love this from John Wesley. He said, money never stays with me. It would burn me if it did. I throw it out of my hands as soon as possible. Least it should find its way into my heart. He says something here. That if he has money, money will not make him have peace. Amen. That once money comes, it takes it out. Because he doesn't want money to control him. That money will distract him. And that was how, that was why he was able to do so much more for God. And these people were going around cities on horses, on donkeys. Traveling, reviving the cities, nations. But you would do much more. Now you have you have cars, you have aeroplanes. That's why I pity some, you know, some people, you know, you know, some people that said, why are pastors buying planes? It is well. I know you don't, you don't, you say, pastor, are, are you part of them? One day I will buy my plane. You will stop it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I've said it and I've said it again. I'll be the first redeemed pastor that will buy a plane. Besides that, the Jew. Pastor, that is hard. From Chapel of Grace? Yes, because you'll be very rich. <laughs> because you'll be very, very rich. <laughs> Wherever I need not waste time, I'm flying to another island for crusade. I jump on it. Hallelujah. In short, I was even, I couldn't wait. I said, I told Pastor Andrea, I want to go and booking for a flight training uh, program. I don't need to wait for a pilot. Liz Airport. She begged, she begged me. I called them. I want to register so that I can train to be a pilot so that when I, once I buy, I'm flying. She begged me. She begged me. Now, when, now came the time when we are flying every Sunday. We are flying. And I asked her, look at it now. If you had not stopped me, the plane would have come because it's fate. I would have been prepared, you know, by having certificates for, for flying. We are flying every Sunday here for two years. 2017, 2018, we are flying every Sunday on the plane, every Sunday on the plane. Preach here, fly to another country and preach. Come back, preach. Either I fly or she fly every Sunday. I was asking that, look at it now. Sometimes we'll be rushing, ask uh, Madam Juliet. After she will be rushing to take me to the airport to catch the flight. Some days I will get there, I already laid the cube in there. I will just, I, I can't stay on the cube because I will miss my flight. From, from economy to emergency, uh, I will tell them my flight is about to go in five minutes. They will take you through one fast track. Is it fast track? Hallelujah. You will be sweating. But if I have my own jet, I just jump in. Amen. Even those, even, even that anxiety, can, it can kill a man. Have you missed a plane? You'll be frustrated. You'll be angry with yourself. So pastors are not buying a plane and some of you are just talking. Talking. Because it's not your husband, not your son. I, I had the story of one bishop, Bishop Oyedepo. He said he was flying to the U.S. to preach for uh, Pastor, Pastor Frederick Price. He got to the airport. No seat for him. He said, but I have a ticket. Second day, no seat for him. Third day, no seat. Frustrated. Came back home. 
luggage stolen. <laughs> he said, but I packed this thing from the airport. I didn't go. There was no flight for me three days. I packed this seat on, you know, on my car. I saw it into the car. Got home, open boot, no, no luggage. Everything gone. Now double what? Now such a man bought a plate. What we are talking? He has a credibility problem. He said, I have now a what? Problem over there. Are you sure you really bought a ticket? They are asking him. Are you really sure? Are you not lying? Three days you couldn't get the plane? You showed them the ticket. Had a ticket. Now such a man is angry with poverty. Angry what? With poverty. Then you are talking. You can be frustrated and continue frustrated. Hallelujah. Let me round up this. That's not where I'm going today. <laughs> Hallelujah. What did I say? Number one, it brings what? Freedom and liberty. I've gone beyond that. Hallelujah. Joy. Amen. What does revival bring? It brings freedom, liberty. It brings joy. Okay. Number, number three. It brings healing and deliverance. Yes, you are right. Matthew 15, 30 says, Then great multitudes came to Jesus, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed. Matthew 15, 30. And many others, and they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. It brings healing and deliverance. Psalm 34, 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Number four, it brings a willingness to serve God. Revival brings what? It makes it easy for people to serve God. Amen. It makes it easy for people to what? Serve God. I think all of us, we are willing to serve God at the, at the stadium. It brings joy. It makes people get excited. So the more we should serve God, the more we should have revival programs. Amen. Your pocket will be affected. You understand? You understand? If you can make it ready, if you can get all the money ready, I will lock myself for 30 days. If you can coordinate all of it, Pastor Andrea will tell me, she was telling me on Friday. Pastor, you no, know, she was saying, can we get to the extent whereby you can lock yourself and not be, be the one to be running around? Where everything can be sorted, you just appear. It will be easier for us. I will see more. If we can get to that level whereby I can just lock myself for 30 days and you are the one coordinating everything, I show up and disappear. No, Bradford will be turned upside down. You will pay the price. You will be rich. I say you will be rich. Because that is only what will make me to be comfortable. To be able to type, you know, just to lock myself. Without asking you to be giving. And one day, this one has not given. This one has need to give. This one thinking of, you no. Know, you'll be rich. May God bless you. May God prosper you. May God accelerate your promotion. You will get to the top of your career. You will own companies. In this land, in the name of Jesus, Psalm 110 verse 3 says, that people shall be willing in the day of that power. There will be a willingness. Somebody came, you know, do you know the sign that God showed me before the program? A guest minister sent me a message that can you send us your church account so that we can give towards the revival? Amen. I just think that God has spoken. Before a guest, somebody I'm bringing in to come and speak, is not asking for the church account to give a seed towards a revival that she's coming to speak. It can only be God. When you get to that level, they know that God is involved. That people are not coming because of on the realm. They are coming 
to even be part of the revival. Let's rise up. My time is up. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate. Clap, clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Father, we thank you.